meeting of the Senate Ag Committee uh, together. Secretary, call the roll. Senator Carpenter. Senator Givens. Senator Howe. Here. Senator Parrott. Senator Thayer. Here. Senator Webb. Senator West. Here. Senator Westerfield. Sen Here in the annex office. Senator Wise. Here. Senator Caslin. Here. And Chairman Hornback. We do have a quorum. I would like to remind members that our remote uh, do not count as a quorum and cannot vote on the bills. Oh, they can if they're off. Okay, if they're remote, off site, off campus. Excuse me, I stand correct. I'm in the building, Chairman. You're in the building. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Westerfield. Uh, our first bill today is going to be uh, Senate Bill 102, Senator Mills. If you'd like to come forward and any guests you may have. I'm by myself, Mr. Chairman. You'd introduce yourself for the record. And I'm Robbie Mills. I represent the uh, 4th District in Western Kentucky, and I'm presenting on uh, Senate Bill 102. Ready for me to proceed? Yes, Okay. Go ahead. Great. Uh, Senate Bill 102 is uh, actually uh, hits in a couple. It hits in my district, and it also hits down in Senator Carroll's district. Uh, we have a, a major issue with uh, Asian carp that have made their way into the lake area and into the Ohio River. Uh, Asian carp are being encouraged to be harvested uh, out of these bodies of waters and we have a couple of really good processors in our area that are doing a, a fine job at processing uh, this meat and uh, sending it overseas and uh, things are going well. We also have in my district we have a uh, individual that is actually catching sturgeon and paddlefish uh, and harvesting the eggs and making caviar. So we have the 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 largest domestic caviar producing organization in, in the nation uh, at Grand Rivers, Kentucky. So what we're doing on this bill is we're trying to add the Kentucky Proud uh, label, and uh, Senator Hornback will have a, an amendment, a floor amendment, that will make it where they cannot participate in the grant process as far as getting money from the state, but it'll at least allow them to put the Kentucky Proud label on the Asian carp paddlefish or the paddlefish and sturgeon uh, on the caviar and this is just really a marketing technique that will help them promote uh, and, and the uh, the approach from uh, from the commissioner is in favor of this and basically he's in favor of anything we can do to increase pulling out Asian carp out of the waters and making because they they create if you haven't ever seen them jump out of the river and lakes, uh, they create major problems for the recreational fishermen, and we've lost fishing tournaments and things of that nature because of Asian carp. So uh, that's just a, a good summary. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. I have a motion on the bill and have a second. Uh, Senator Mills, I would like to say just one comment. Uh, thank you for bringing this in. And I wanted to explain what my floor amendment uh, is okay. going to say exactly. One thing that you brought out to me that a, a minor change we're going to make, uh, it's sturgeon and not swordfish has been Correct. has been said earlier. So will be the wording will be changed to sturgeon. And I appreciate you your research and finding that out. The other thing is, is that there's language, and I'm going to read the language very short. It says, no producer or processors or any of the following fi fish species shall be eligible for monies from the Kentucky Proud Promotion Fund or the Rural Development Fund as provided under KRS 248. Uh, what that's saying is that they can't use ag development money. That's that Rural Development Fund right. uh, is what it is. Uh, we're allowing them to use the, the logo of Kentucky Proud. It's very good for our tourism yep. and other things too. Uh, and, and we do always promote economic development. I think it'll help them. But we want to be very careful that uh, – the monies that are there are used for animals that are raised on farms and not wild game. And we don't want this going out to serve it or something else right. and being used for something else. So thank you for allowing me to, to put this friendly floor amendment on it. We get on to the floor. Uh, any other comments, questions? If not, secretary, call the roll. Senator Carpenter. Senator Caslin. 
Senator Givens, Senator Howe. Aye. Senator Parrott, Senator Thayer. Aye. Senator Webb, Senator West. Aye. Senator Westerfield. Aye. Senator Wise. Aye. And Chairman Hornback. Aye. Passes with. Motion passes. Um, Do you have any motion for consent? Motion for consent if it's in order and the sponsor agrees. I agree. A motion for consent and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Senator, you did a good job. Your motion, your bill's on consent. Oh, actually, we can't do consent because you're a Do it, yeah. Oh, that's right. We can't do consent. Excuse me. I made a mistake, Mr. Floor Leader. We can't do consent because I'm doing the floor amendment, so I have to come off consent. So I'll take that back. Sorry about the, that. The, the floor amendment will automatically take the bill off consent. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you, Senator Mills. Senator Southworth. I think you have Senate Bill 82. If you'd like to come forward and bring any guests that you may have, uh, I will not. I will let everybody know that there are uh, considerable people that have asked about speaking on this, and so I will be limiting that kind of time uh, that each can speak. Uh, we've got uh, some in favor and some that are opposed, so I'll be limiting your time to about 20 minutes, uh, 10 minutes for each side. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Southworth, you want to introduce yourself and your guest? I'm and Adrian. proceed. Adrian Southworth, uh, representing I think the speaker's the, not on. Well, it is on, but it just sounds like it's not on. So let's go a little better here. We'll lean in. Um, I'm Adrian Southworth, representing the Seventh Senate District, and um, this is one of my guests in person today, Edwin Nybert. He's from the Sportsman's. Lee. Yes, thank you for the official words. And um, we also have on Zoom joining us today, Doug Morgan. Doug will wave at us here. I'll let him speak as soon as um, Edwin finishes. And we will um, proceed if you're ready, Mr. Chairman. I'm ready. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I do want to bring um, to the attention if you do you want to take action on the committee sub first? Motion on the sub. Do a second? All in favor of adopting sub, signify by saying aye. All opposed, like sign. The sub's in order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The sub is very important to this bill because all of the groups that have um, come together on this are all in support of the sub. And we all uh, did not particularly favor the original bill that was three pages, which is now just longer than three lines. This was not the first bill I plan to file, though. However, it represents everything that I stand for. Small government, constitutional rights, privacy, respect for life, liberty, and property. Now, the lion's share of our members belong to the Kentucky Sportsman's Caucus, and of course, the sportsman's president, who is my constituent, is here to speak on the bill. But a lot of the groups, in fact, all the dog groups, with the exception of the PETA affiliates, are all supporting this committee sub. We have the Houndsman's Group, we have the American Kennel Club, Best Friends Animal Society, American Dog Breeders Association, that includes everyone with pet trainers, I have everything from that to the CDC, the Humane Society. Even the American Bar Association recognizes the need for this legislation. As I have talked to local government associations, one thing is clear, local government lobbies for local government and i understand their predicament even the league of cities understands the need to eliminate these ordinances but they can't go against the local governments they represent to do what's right in a broader sense but as state policymakers, we have to consider the public interest at large which i believe is small government let me make a very clear distinction small government is not necessarily local. We protect people's gun rights by prohibiting local governments from making restrictions on our constitutional rights. When local government wanted to clamp down on emissions from our F-150s, there was outcry. Why? Small government is not the same thing as local government. What struck me about this issue most was the court case in Iowa where a retired police officer 
who was paralyzed, had a service dog who was a pit bull. The city got wind of it, removed the pit bull from the home, kenneled him outside of city limits, and the court overturned the ordinance saying it was a violation of the ADA. Think about this in the context of the Constitution. The Fourth Amendment protects us from unreasonable search and seizure. Does taking a dog on a walk or to a grooming appointment constitute plain view for the purposes of violating the privacy of someone's home or property? Are the city police allowed to snoop into the yard when the dog is let out to play? How are we to enforce these ordinances if we don't do harm at the same time to constitutional rights? In your folders, let me know if you're up to the challenge to determine which one of all the dogs in the pictures is a pit bull. Now, I am the first person to point out every local area in this state is so different. But some things are universal. What happens to the dog after it's seized? One likelihood is the dog is actually killed. We have service dogs here in Kentucky who are pit bulls. What happens even if they don't live in a city where this ordinance is, their mother falls, needs help, they need to move in with her. She lives in a city that has this ordinance. If that mother city bans pit bulls, the service dog is now profiled, discriminate against, and dog CPS gets put on them. That is not the hallmark of a free society, nor is it respectful of our constitutional rights of life, liberty, and property. After this bill passes, Local governments will still have every tool to lawfully address the local wishes of those who would prefer dogs be kenneled, fenced, leashed, vaccinated, hair trimmed, not walked on public sidewalks, or whatever other ordinances on nuisance and public safety that they would desire. What they will not have is liability creating, rights violating, subjective dog segregation that rips service dogs from owners to create lawsuits. Like gun rights, property rights is not a local question. It can be cited today. 22 other states, including some of our good friends, Texas, South Carolina, South Dakota, Florida, have superbly written laws accomplishing this goal. And that is why I'm here today to urge the members to support and vote yes on Senate Bill 82 as amended by committee substitute. I might remind you, you just got uh, a couple of minutes to make it very brief. Yes, sir. In your testimony. We've got to leave time for the other side. Yes, sir. Uh, and I will be brief. My name is Edwin Nyburn. I'm the president of the League of Kentucky Sports. Can you hear me? Is it on? Oh, there it's on. Sorry. Yes. My name is Edwin Nyburn. I'm the president of the League of Kentucky Sportsmen. I represent 23,000 members across the state. Uh, in our nine federations, our, our board of directors did meet on this bill and unanimously voted in support of it. We feel it's a property rights issue. And as I was researching the bill after talking with Senator Southworth, it, it amazed me to find out that the number one dog bite in the United States of America actually belongs to a sporting breed, the Cocker Spaniel. If we allow uh, breeds to be segregated against, discriminated against, just based solely on their viciousness, Cocker Spaniel lovers are gonna be really mad at us. Um, the sportsmen of, of the state absolutely unanimously support Senate Bill 82, and we would hope that you all would as well. Thank you. And Got we him. have Doug Morgan. Okay. He's on real, Zoom. Real quick, Mr. Morgan, uh, just a minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to speak here today, and I want to thank Senator Southworth for presenting this bill as amended. It is a good bill. Uh, I am a uh, AKC, UKC, PKC, ACHA, uh, credentialed uh, bench show judge, master of hounds, and a hunt director. I've been uh, active in uh, dog organizations my whole life, over 40 years. And if it's one thing that's apparent to me after being around dogs that long, there is no bad dog breeds, but we do unfortunately have a few bad dog owners. And most of the time, when there's a problem, it goes back to the owner, not the breed of the dog. 
Uh, Kentuckians love their dogs. We rank third in the United States, percentage-wise, of dog ownership. There's over 2 million dog owners in Kentucky, and they love their dogs. And there's 300 breeds recognized in the United States. And I'm sure that all 300 are here somewhere. And to single out one breed for a city or a township to ban simply serves no purpose and does nothing but hurt the dogs and the owners. And I support this bill. I'm uh, past president of the Kentucky Houndsman Association, and I'm here on behalf of all dog owners and myself. And I would ask this bill to be moved on. And thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Sorry you couldn't be here with us today. Well, me, I've just I, had electric one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope you've warmed back up. Bye. Yeah, good. Uh, and now, uh, Senator Southworth, we've got some uh, folks that want to speak in opposition. Uh, J.D. Cheney, if you want to come to the desk. And I think there, uh, we've also got Letty. No, they're, they're full. Okay. These are all full. full. Okay. J.D., if you'd like to yes, introduce sir. yourself for the record. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'm J.D. Cheney with the Kentucky League of Cities. I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman, you letting me come. I think this is my second time in all these years before the Senate Ag Committee, and I think the last time was about a bill just about like this that the chairman was uh, was carrying as well about four or five years ago. I don't know if the will of the General Assembly has changed regarding uh, regarding legislation like this, but I can tell you affirmatively that the will of, of my membership – which are the city officials across the state, have not. If you'll recall, Senator, I, I tried to do what we usually do, which is to seek middle ground on legislation, and I got spanked uh, by my membership for, uh, for trying, to, trying to abdicate this. I had no idea four or five years ago about the number of cities uh, and, and county governments as well that have ordinances that deal with this. These local legislative bodies, have had uh, intensive legislative debates in their communities. Uh, Mayor uh, Eric Haas from from Fort Thomas uh, was supposed to be here today. He sends his regrets that he could he could not make it to talk about uh, about what they went through in Fort Thomas to get that legislation on the books. This would upend those local uh, deliberative decisions by those local legislative bodies. It's not a shock for us to be consistent with regard to to the principle of home rule. I uh, had a delightful conversation with the sponsor uh, of the bill. Uh, we, we deal with cities. The league just doesn't do legislative work. We help them from a legal perspective as well. Uh, we have model ordinances that deal with vicious dogs. We, we provide counsel to city attorneys and, and others uh, related to how they may model their ordinances when we get asked on those issues. And we have been of late counseling our cities that they probably need to take into consideration uh, the fact that we have a, a decision out of the Northern District of Iowa, a federal district court, it did not go beyond that, that made a decision and, and provided some pretty solid legal analysis about the application of the Americans with Disabilities Act as, as related to, to Title II of that in terms of making reasonable accommodations for individuals for service, for service animals. It, it's easier if those city ordinances probably acknowledge, acknowledge that balancing test if they are going to be uh, specific to a breed uh, related to that. But let make no mistake, there's not, not any court that has held that there's a constitutional right here that's, that's been violated by virtue of these, these ordinances that are in place across many communities. The, 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 uh, I guess we got 28 other states that would allow local governments to, to proceed in this fashion. And so our membership would ask that we keep this at the local level. We allow local legislative bodies to make these determinations and make these changes via ordinance without the state coming in and preempting. It's a pretty, it's a pretty simple argument. We can talk about that that accommodation. That can be done under the ordinance. That's the applicable federal law. If you have a service animal, uh, the application of those stat of those ordinances uh, would uh, would probably need to yield to make that a reasonable accommodation to help individuals. Uh, with uh, w that need those animals in order to perform essential life functions uh, under the ADA. So that's a federal law that uh, that already applies, uh, and and it will apply. Of course, that's a Northern District of Iowa 
district court decision. We don't have any appellate uh, decision on that, but it's a well-reasoned, I'll acknowledge it's a well-reasoned opinion uh, that cities ought to take into account with the application of their ordinance. But this just completely bans uh, any of these ordinances, and we have them, a plethora of them in northern Kentucky, southeastern Kentucky, southwestern Kentucky, and uh, their city officials want to, to maintain that local element to en engage as local legislators. And we'd ask for you to vote no on the bill as originally filed and the committee sub, which I just now got a glimpse at. <laughs> I have a motion on the bill. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Do any other members have any comments on the bill? If not, uh, uh, Senator Southworth, do you want to come forward and rebute anything you had to say or just in one minute? Um. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your support in this issue over the last several years. I know this used to be your bill, and um, I'm glad to carry it this year, and uh, thank you all for making your considerations. I will just point out, once again, we are the state legislature. We don't represent only our local governments. We also represent all of our people, and to me, this is more important on the broader scope of things, watching out for our people and what's best for them. Um, and it doesn't always necessarily align with local government. I understand those who have major concerns about that. Uh, but I've talked to, of course, a lot of my local officials, magistrates, so forth. I have the special privilege of having many of them from the associations and so forth staff-wise are in my district and my constituents because a lot of their home bases are Frankfurt and surrounding areas. Um, but I've enjoyed those phone conversations. I understand their position. They understand mine. Um, I think we could move forward on this. They have all of the options, nuisance ordinances and so forth. And I won't get into the details of that because I've seen plenty of other cases that are in Kentucky about nuisance ordinances and all those things. Breeds just don't need to be part of it. Okay, thank you, Secretary. Any other questions? If not, Secretary, call a roll. Senator Carpenter. Can I explain my vote, Mr. Yes, Chairman? please. Uh, I appreciate Senator Southworth bringing it forward. Uh, my little girl, Ten, is a dog lover. She she has three in the house. so uh, And she says all dogs, about like my good friend Doug Morgan there, she says all dogs are good, just bad people is what she tells me. But <laughs> I understand that we, we always want local control until we don't want local control. That's That seems like how, it's how government works anymore. We always are asking for it until we don't want it, and then we see that it's not the need. So uh, I appreciate the bill. I'm going to vote no today because I've had so many of my constituents that represent local governments call and say, hey, Jared, we, we, do, we do not want this. We want to be able to control our decision at the local level from my judge executive, who's been a friend for years, to my mayor, to, to, the, to the city attorneys. Um, I understand the need for the bill. I understand the reasoning for it. Uh, I understand why we've brought it forward, and the chairman's done this before. And it's kind of funny that a, a bill like this kind of gets controversial at times. Uh, we wouldn't really expect a bill about dogs, as, as Senator Southworth and I have talked before, uh, to be so controversial and such a hot topic. But it is. People love animals. I've got a bunch of rental property, and if I didn't allow pets, uh, I have to set a, a limit on what size of pets they could be, or they'd be 300-pound uh, uh, dogs in the, my apartments. But if I didn't allow pets, then half of my units would be empty because it's amazing of how many people want to make sure they have their pet in their in their in their apartment. But I want it to be able to continue to be local control. I think that's an important issue, and I think this issue is going to come up more. And I know that you've got a passion for it, and I think you'll be able to work with the groups from both sides to make sure if we do a bill in the future that we can get everybody on board. So I appreciate your uh, work on it, but I'm going to vote no. Senator Caslin. Senator Gibbons. Senator Howe? No. Senator Parrott? No. Senator Thayer? No. Senator Webb? Senator West? I'd like to explain my vote, Mr. Chairman. Yes, explain and vote and explain. Today I'm voting no, and um, Senator Southworth, I'll just want to explain to you my reasoning. When I first came into the Senate, um, Senator Hornback tried to talk me into carrying a dog bill that year and that's the best decision i ever made was not to carry that bill um 
This is um, this is one of those bills that's on the line, as, as Senator Carpenter says. We're all for local control until we're not. Um, but generally, I'm for home rule, for local control, and that's the reason for my vote today. Uh, some of the questions you raised, if we do get to that level, if we see that local governments are clamping down on service animals and not allowing those things, um, as Senator Schickel would say, we'll be back here in nine months or eight months, whatever. So um, I'm voting no today, but keeping my eye open for those problems as they arise, and we can address, I think we can address those if they come forward. Thank you. Senator Westerfield. Vote no, and if I may explain my vote, Mr. Chairman. Yes, explain. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my my explanation is very similar to the ones that have already been expressed by Senator Carpenter and Senator West, uh, and, and based on the concerns that have been raised. Almost every local official uh, that I represent in my district has reached out uh, on the bill and expressed their opposition to it and has asked me to vote no for it. Um, and there are times when I think local control needs to be protected. I think this is one of them. Uh, Mr. Cheney and KLC is aware of at least one example, uh, respectfully, where I, I'm not as crazy about local control, uh, but on this one, uh, I believe it's important, and uh, I want to make sure that the local government slide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Wise and Chairman Hornback. I'm going to explain my I vote, and I carry the bill, as uh, Senator Southworth said before. And, uh, you know, I've worked with J.D. Cheney a whole lot on, on local control bills and, and those type of bills, and I believe in local control. Uh, but it's like everybody else has said. I mean, we believe in it on some things. Other things, we don't think we need it. I think Senator Carpenter said it well. Uh, and, and my belief on this particular piece of legislation is it's not about the dog. It's about the owner you know, more than anything else. Uh, I think that's what it is. And and we look at the face of a dog and, and we discriminate against them because of the way they look, the breed that they are, and uh, don't take into consideration that it might have to do with part of the training and the upbringing and everything that they had. And that's why I think that, you know, we have to be careful when we talk about low control because if you look all over this nation, uh, there are a lot of things that I think a lot of these members in here don't agree with on local control. And uh, so, you know, it's a balance we have to keep all the time, and I'm going to vote aye. The bill fails. Senator Southworth, I appreciate you bringing this forward, but uh, it will not move forward today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Eight to two. Three. There's three of us, Max Wise. He voted out. Oh, three to seven. Yeah. It was seven to three. Anybody else got anything to bring up today? Oh, Senator Parrott and Senator Givens. Uh, Senator Parrott. I'd like to record a I vote on Senate Bill 102, please. Okay, and I vote on Senate Bill 102 is recorded. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would also like to record an I vote on Senate Bill 102. Okay, Senator Givens. Thank you. And it will not change the outcome. And it will not change the outcome. Thank you all very much. Meetings adjourned.